great finale here on stage with some people who are going to help us understand how Sweden can take the lead in the digital race um, and answer the questions, what research is needed, which new partnerships and collaborations are necessary and how can they be created and what are the prerequisites for successful deployment of digital technology. And the moderator is no other than Anna Kiefer, the Executive Director of Digital Futures. I'll let her welcome our panel. Welcome Anna and welcome panelists. Please come with me. <laughs> Wonderful. So, how do we ensure that Sweden takes the lead and leads the digital race? Uh, well, we have brought together five thought leaders uh, representing different stakeholders to help us answer that question. And I'm honored to moderate this panel. Uh, so we have with us Daria Isaksson, who is Director General of Innova, Sweden's innovation agency, a government agency. Uh, we have Peter Bedouar, uh, who is Chief Technology Officer of Saab, uh, keeping uh, people and society safe, right? <laughs> and uh, we have Pontus de Laval, Chair of the WASP uh, Board, and this is the Wallenberg AI Autonomous Systems and Software Program. Yes. And we have Jana Tumova, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, who is associate professor at KTH and also affiliated with Digital Futures and involved in our projects. Uh, so representing the researcher's side. And last but not least, Magnus Frodig, who is vice president uh, and head of Ericsson Research. Uh, and Ericsson is creating game-changing technologies and services that shape our future. No small task. Uh, but first of all, I would like an, to ask a question to the audience. Do you believe that Sweden is currently taking a lead? Hmm. Is that, or, a hands up? that is a hands up. I'm giving them time to think. <laughs> is, Sweden, is Sweden taking the lead currently in the digital race? Raise a hand if you think so. Yeah, we have. Two, five, seven, eight, something like that. Good to know. So there is room for improvement, apparently. And luckily, we have people here who can tell us uh, what we need to do. So I'd like to start with Daria and ask, which are the most important success factors of a funding program? Uh, well, that's a question that also other people at stage could reflect on, and there are different types of programs for different purposes. But if I'm supposed to give kind of a generic answer, I would say uh, actor engagement, ambition, and agility. So actor engagement in the sense of having actual um, really strong long-term commitment um, from the actors that have the, the let's say, both the problems <laughs> Uh, and the know-how of what is truly ambitious uh, within this space. Um, and then they need to work with a mutual trust because a, a successful program will require a lot of collaboration. And you said that, let's say, choosing the right uh, chairperson is a good idea <laughs> because you need to build a cultural trust to be able to have the collaboration. Um, and ambition in, in the sense of uh, at best, you know, you get the best research and the best in industry and the best of startups and the best of also critical perspectives like students seeing others uh, challenging itself to really set some ambitious targets and goals um, and uh, commit to them long term. And then since the, the world is, you know, you're learning as you go and the world is moving quite fast, so you're going to... Uh, see new problems and new opportunities, so you also need to have a, uh, an agility in the program to be able to, to address uh, new opportunities as you go along and to actually um, learn from the experiences along the way. But it needs to be a long-term commitment from everyone. And this comes from a person with a lot of experience of these topics, so agility and trust. And trust is a recurring theme. We heard that word, that word several times over the, the last couple of days. Uh, so it, uh, it comes into everything. And why not then move over to a program? Are you working with agility and trust at the Wallenberg Foundation? You target AI and autonomous systems, and how can this be leveraged? 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the uh, the program we have run the program now since 2015. So um, uh, it's a mature program. Um, we work with primarily three different tools. One is a graduate school, and to give you some examples of this graduate school, we we have uh, so far uh, graduated 100. Uh, PhD students in this area, and uh, um, of these 100, roughly uh, roughly 60 have actually went to Swedish industry. So I think that's one example of how we leverage uh, the the knowledge that we build in the program into Swedish society. Roughly 30 of these 100 have uh, uh, co uh, continued their academic career in Sweden, and we lost maybe six or seven primarily to China. Uh, and so from that perspective, um, I think uh, the graduate school has been a, a, a very good good tool for us. In all, all in all, we will have educated more than 600 uh, or graduated more than 600 uh, during the full scope of the program. Uh, we will run uh, an additional seven year and then our money runs out. And then we've spent more than 6.5 million billion Swedish crowns. So it's a, uh, for Swedish uh, perspective, it's a big program. Another tool we have in the program is uh, uh, recruitment. So we have we are very actively recruiting top talent to Sweden, both young young professionals, or, or um, but also more senior. Uh, senior uh, ex experts in the field, and uh, so far we've been very, very su successful uh, bringing in top talent to Sweden. Uh, and the third, the third uh, tool we have, uh, a major tool we have, is uh, research arenas. In these research arenas, uh, uh, academia and industry can collaborate, and I, I think this is especially important in an area like this where you you run through the TRL levels, maybe not like traditionally, maybe five to ten years, but there we can do it in six months or even shorter. And then, of course, it's extremely important that you have these connections with with industry. Uh, so we, we try to do our best to, yeah, to help Swedish society. I'm sure you are. And uh, this shows great uh, impact, empowering a younger generation and uh, building competence and skills uh, that will have long-term effects for sure, positive effects. We hope so. Uh, and that uh, moves us to the research side of things. So uh, we have Jana Tumova. Uh, as a prominent research leader, within this field, what do you believe would benefit research and development in this context? Um, I think that first of all, we have to acknowledge that we have a lot of things happening already and we have to keep them running, but there are some tools that maybe we could boost up a little bit. So for instance, we could have larger funding schemes for Sweden, US collaboration, US who is right next to us leading the digital ra race, right? Um, there is also a model of industrial academic collaboration that I think that is a little underutilized in Sweden, and that is when academia goes to industry, let's say 20% of their time, so sort of opposite to what we know as affiliated professors coming from industry to academia, and this really allows to flip the narrative a little bit from asking how can I, as a researcher, feed industrial needs, how do I fit into those projects into how is my research relevant? Or asking from industrial side, there is a cool researcher, how can we tap onto that line of research with a little bit um, like broader and more open-minded mi uh, mind? I think that that like, fed into research a lot there. Second area I wanna mention is we need faster and easier access to resources, to data, to platforms, test beds, um, um, all of these things, the computational power, storage. So these are things that we fight with in academia because they're quite costly. We usually don't have the money to spend by ourselves. We have to fight for the money. And this fight is sometimes very, very long to the point that we take 
years to find the funding sources to build up something that we really need today. So more agility in that space, I think, would empower the research quite a bit. And then you're in perfect company here. All the stakeholders you're talking about are standing right next to you. So, so let's move on to Peter Bedouar. Uh, as an industrial partner, how do you think that collaboration changes? Who needs to collaborate and how? And maybe you want to reply a bit to uh, Jana's uh, statement. Yes, I, I can do that. But first, I would like to reflect a bit on the topic for this panel. Uh, what do we really mean by leading the digital race? Because uh, uh, as a rather small country, although very ambitious and, and with great skills, I think we need to understand that the digital race is big and we need to identify in what niches we can lead. And in other areas, we need to find partners that can lead and that we can trust to lead our way forward. Once again, talking about trust. Uh, and I think that for us, it's important to be in control of all areas, but perhaps not necessarily in the lead, but at least we need to be in control so that we know what we will get and where we are heading. Uh, in such a setup where we rely on others to lead other parts of the digitalization, uh, collaboration will become extremely important, and once again, trust. Uh, because now, as we have seen in the world, uh, the word politics shows us that there's a lot of polarization going on. Uh, we need to be careful when selecting these partners, international as well as national, so that this is something that we can trust and rely on for a long term to come. And uh, that, that's it's not as easy as it was some a few years ago. And as a representative for Saab, a security and defense company, we need to be extra careful. And that will affect how we can collaborate with others in industry, but also with academy, which uh, is a challenge and where we're trying to find our feet, how we can do that in, in uh, this new, more polarized environment. But that said, the need for collaboration in the area of digitalization is very obvious, both to create arenas for innovation and to utilize the latest research and technology available. So we really need to connect the various parts of the innovation system, both in the real triple helix environment. And I think we know how to do that. We just need to, to get this thing rolling. Thank you. Fantastic. So. Collaboration is more important than ever, but also trust is more of an issue than ever. Yes. Yes. And with that, Magnus, perhaps you want to fill in. So facing large societal and industrial challenges uh, where new technology could contribute in a positive way, how do you provide the right framework? Yeah, I think the, the area of digitalization that, that we perhaps talk mostly about here it's such an important thing, and there are so many different initiatives. So I think there are now industries, um, research financers, um, academia, starting to work on, on, on the fact that we need to get some structure into this. And um, the, the discussions going on here is that we need a strategic agenda around sort of uh, research and innovation. And that could be for many areas, but for particularly here in, in the digitalization area would, would be really important. We have so many different uh, initiatives. So we have Digital Futures, and then we have your sister program Elite, significant efforts. We have um, the program for advanced digitalization that got a lot of financing. We have the VASP program, we have the new competence centers in the area, etc. So there's a lot of different things. And, and there, is no, uh, there is no real structure in, into this. So it's a little bit implicit 
today that Vinova is of course sitting in a lot of these different boards and myself is in a, in a lot of the different boards and, and Saab and ABB etc. Right? So of course we are trying of course to, to see how these t different initiatives can complement each other and how they can build on each other and how they can contribute then to, to uh, strategic advantage for Sweden. But that's sort of implicit. So I think we really would like to see that we are uh, formulating a more long-term agenda where we have more sort of understandable targets which is financed and can be followed up etc in order to to get out the maximum here for for sweden competitiveness and for society etc and then perhaps you are already uh, answering the next question about impact what are the prerequisites to ensure impact and how do we really make a difference uh, so coordinating all these different initiatives as you're saying I'd like to ask add a twist to this question we listened to Pia Sandvik the other day who was um, uh, giving a, speech, a keynote speech to our future digi leaders at digital futures she's director general uh, at technique for the which is the association of Swedish engineering industries and she was saying that while you're measuring impact who will judge if we do a good job? So, you know, yeah, who, and, and how? So maybe the impact depends on who you ask. Uh, and I thought that was interesting. So your comments around impact. Well, I, I'd like Maya. to tie in on a few things, but I mean, one way to define... So understanding what winning looks like. What is it like when we actually succeeded? That's how you need to define the impact. And that should also be, you know, are we on track? And then, of course, I'd like to see uh, industry, academia, and the startup world be the ones who judge, uh, not the agencies or others. Um, so that's one thing, but I'd like to tie in because it's absolutely, I completely agree. We know that we need uh, the right, we need, uh, we need to get better at having the right technology infrastructure in place. It needs to be, you know, invested in. It needs to be long-term and more strategic. And for that, we need the strategy. I'd like to comment also a bit on, on the culture. So we talk about trust. It's actually one of the things that makes Sweden really good at innovation is that we have a high level of trust. And yet, we need to evolve as well. So to have the truly most attractive research and innovation environments, uh, we need to, to evolve to the next step. So my reflection would be the best researchers, the best entrepreneurs, usually they have really high uh, ambition. They want to make kind of a dent in the universe. They're willing to high risk, high reward bets. They're willing to experiment along the way. Uh, but they also celebrate success and understand uh, how important it is to provide for the ecosystem. And that's one thing that I, I would ask myself also, if we're just talking about the culture and taking also the culture one step forward, what kind of vector am I in that equation? So as a leader in my decisions in the rooms, but also at the coffee machine, <laughs> um, but also in the investment decisions about, for instance, infrastructure, which need to be the right ones, but also open, <laughs> uh, et cetera. So there's something to be said about the next level culture as well. Mm -hmm. Great, any other comments on impact? Yeah, I, I, I can share a few reflections. I, I think it's, it's of course important that, that we are doing a lot of experiments, there are startups, etc., and, and, and things are tried. But it's also important to scale things, to really to get it massively out and used. And I guess there the larger companies typically come, come in and, and, and can work on, on that and, and can get our ecosystem to start to use technology and really provide it. Uh, because uh, if, if you look at the mobile technology, which is perhaps sort of one of the best examples of actually scaling a technology, right? That has an enormous impact on how we are doing things and how we can be more efficient and how we can reduce our CO2 footprints, etc. So I think it's a lot of potential if we can get ideas and, and concepts and then really scale them out and be used in in society and industry, etc. Do you agree, Jana? I do, of course. I mean, the big initiatives um, are really important, but I think that we also have to remember that at the end of that chain, there is the researcher who is driven by ambition and what drives us in academia really is freedom, 
that's why we stayed, right? So we want to kind of like explore the things that we want to explore sometimes, and we want to have the freedom to explore a variety of things, and sometimes we just don't fix those boxes, we don't fi fit those strategic frameworks, and it's completely all right. Uh, we also have to support researchers like that, because research is about thinking out of the box, the good ideas came out of the box, um, they, the neural networks are here from many decades ago. It's, uh, and they were not accepted for a long time. And now look at that. So I, I think that we also have to keep the academic freedom and the what if in, our, in the way that we conduct research and not just think about the five to 10 years, but think what if. Yeah. I think that perhaps it's not an indication of impact, but at least some kind of success along the way is that we have several big industries that are still investing and doing research and development here in Sweden. Because, I mean, this is for, for us large companies, this is kind of we can do research in many places in the world. But I mean, Ericsson still have their head office and main research here in Sweden at Saab as well. And I think that's some indication of that the system that we have in Sweden, the innovation ecosystem, the academic system, the collaboration system, it really works. So I think that, that that's actually what, uh, I mean, it's, it's still attractive for us to do this kind of really advanced research in Sweden. And there are a lot of things contributing to this. So I think that's at least one way to measure some kind of success. So that's something we don't want to change then? No. <laughs> Yes, we have yeah. Pontus and then Daria. Yes, yes, the comment from, from the foundation per, 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 per perspective, uh, Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation, of course, we, we fund basic research and we don't see any, how should I say, okay. there is no controversy against uh, doing basic research and then actually trying to leverage that, that knowledge that you build. And we've set up tools also to help researchers uh, get their technology out. So we have both uh, uh, soft money donations to university or a, a research group that so they have a chance to ba build maybe a proof of concept or something like that. But also we've, in the investment arm of the foundation, we've also set up um, a small investment company so we can, uh, we can invest in these extremely early phases. Uh, so, but... Uh, then I totally agree to actually uh, make a difference in the end. Industry have to uh, take take the how do I say take the lead in the end uh, to to make I impact in society. Uh, so, and I think we are blessed in Sweden with big companies and and also a thriving uh, uh, ecosystems of small companies. So, so far we have, we need to coordinate our efforts. We need culture, uh, we need freedom, uh, money matters. Yeah, what and, else? and also just to come to that point, because I think this is an extremely important point. There is no contradiction between the need for basic uh, and free research and the need for innovation. We need both. And actually, one impact that we can measure is whether we are, are really successful in attracting even more of that world-class talent that we need. And we know that in the strongest innovation ecosystems in the world, which this is you know, part of, but we want it to be even stronger, uh, those types of talent t typically meet a lot and inspire each other. There are different types of questions, like the basic questions and the needs-driven questions, but they can both be equally ambitious and they can both, and they're both important. Um, so that's one impact that I think, because we didn't mention, but I think it's underlying this entire discussion that we are a tiny country Research is international. Uh, the, the, the impact we want to make is international. So uh, just really together we can build even stronger uh, research and innovation ecosystem. Uh, but then we need to acknowledge that we're in it together, that we need both perspectives. There's just no contradiction. Uh, it's cold enough here. We need to you know, be even more attractive. <laughs> And that's an important message to our international audience here today, both physically and online. Yeah, so that's an impact I'm looking forward to actually seeing even better. Yep. International outreach. Attractiveness. Yes. More, more of you guys and really great results. Yep. Um, we have two questions from the audience here. Uh, we have one which I think is interesting, which is why does one country have to lead? 
if you could reflect on that. And then the other one is, um, how do we support young researchers? What recommendations would you give to them? Because we want more of them. Yeah. Is it important I, I, to have I can take a little bit leading. on this one country, perhaps. Uh, and and uh, I think um, uh, we, we are seeing how the different regions are now competing. There is a technology race. And, and I guess all different regions would like to, to be in control of, of technology. And they would like to, to know that they have the capabilities of um, providing the technology for that region. They, you don't want to have uh, surprises when it comes to your dependencies, right? So, so there is, of course, a, a, a need of, of leadership in, in, in the areas. Then if it's one country or not, but it's a set of countries, I think, would, would need to together be able to lead. And then for Sweden, we are a small country, and. We will not be able to have expertise in all needed field, but we can have our sort of specialities that we then can provide and, and get sort of things back. So you, you, you need some leading things to, to trade with, I think. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and I, I would echo that. And, you know, <laughs> sovereignty and, and, you know, being a really leader in technology, US, China, that translates into global power. Um, but being at the forefront is also necessary to contribute. And I'm saying in this competition, we also understand that there are some uh, things that we want to um, contribute to. The ability to use technology to really truly address the societal challenges, climate, etc., make sure that we can use resources, build a, uh, and, and, and also have an open society moving forward. Uh, and for that, we need to be in the forefront. And I think that the leadership we see from Swedish industry and willingness to bet on each other, very specifically, I have researchers coming saying, oh, but we get access to data at a deep level, like there's so much trust, we can work with things here. That kind of quality is a very important contribution. Uh, and I think that we should build on that. Yeah. I, I can just uh, emphasize there, I mean, Sweden, small country, we said it several times, we need to build on our strengths. And I mean, we have some natural resources, we have forests, we have big mines and so on, but primarily we have our engineering skills and the research uh, impact that we have. And I think that that's really where we can really compete. We, we cannot compete with cheap labor, we cannot compete in other areas, but this thing with the technical excellence, the skill set we have, innovation, that's an area where we can can compete with anyone in the world. And I think that's, we just need, as, as Magnus said, we need a strategy where we say, let's focus efforts here. Let's not, not compete everywhere, because then, then, I mean, you will not have excellence anywhere, but focus on a few areas and make sure that we do that good. Then whether we are leading or not, but at least we, we, we can have, I think, can really have an impact there. And, and that's really our strength, our way, our ability to work together and, and to really make great things. I mean, we have a few world leading companies, which is uh, quite impressive for a country of our size. Absolutely. And part of this is perhaps also the younger generation. Yes. That was the second question. Yes. <laughs> and what we do with them. Yes. Yeah, and then that's another thing. Like if, you're, if we're looking at Europe, Europe uh, has been in the race of knowledge and we're ki uh, kind of really highly competitive. If we look at uh, having the startup ecosystem, the ability to also drive the new uh, companies, Sweden is also a really, really uh, strong player from a European perspective. And we need to take using that strength moving forward, because a lot of the problems now need to... It's new ecosystems, and yes. for that we also need new companies. But that, to be said, is also a challenge for all of Europe, including Sweden. Yes, there are some serious uh, gaps that we also need to address, in, not least in, uh, in funding. And if you want to save the world today, then you should be an engineer and be, or a researcher. I mean, that's the way to, to save the planet, and I think that's, uh, I think that's a quite strong reason to... to <laughs> Uh, work in this area. And there's the answer to the second question, I believe. <laughs> the recommendation to the younger generation. Uh, and maybe that moves us into the future a bit. I'd like to ask you uh, about society 10 years from now. Uh, so what needs to have happened 10 years from now? And how do you envisage collaboration and impact in that longer term perspective? So the young engineers that we're training today, what? Uh, 
what happens with them and society 10 years from now. Yes. Well, well, I hope that uh, all the 600 uh, graduate uh, um, uh, PhDs have now started working in Swedish industry. Hmm. At least as a start. Yeah, you have a clear 10 year perspective. <laughs> yes, Jana. I, I think I kind of don't dare to say because 10 years is so long. And if you asked me 10 years ago, I would be completely off with my guess. So I think that the progress and the pace is just much faster than we have imagined. Two years ago, the biggest robotics conference had 2,000 contributions. Today, it has 4,000. It grew twice in two years. So who knows where it gets in, in 10 years. So I'm curious, but I don't dare to say. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yes, I think the, the potential of the technologies that we now have and, and their evolution, if you look about sort of the connectivity, the, the possibility to collect sort of sensory data into the digital environment and then the, the sort of evolution on, on the edge compute combined then with, with AI of today and tomorrow and, and the day after that, uh, it will be uh, uh, the possibility for, for a really strong sh changing force, of course. And, and I think we have seen how some industries and things we do have changed during the last sort of 10 years or five years. Or so. That will, of course, be now sector by sector we, we will sort of be redefined. And I, I think um, we will see a lot of things happening the coming five years and then 10 years, of course. It's even harder to predict. Now, 10 years is perhaps too long of a perspective. <laughs> uh, we need to wrap up, if I may, just one more minute. Uh, I'd like to ask you in three words, what would you encourage our audience to focus on? <laughs> if we start with Daria. <laughs> OK. Uh, well, excellence, obviously, in the broad term also, research-wise, but also innovation-wise. Uh, ambition and uh, and uh, be the vector that strengthens trust and collaborative ability because that will enable what I want in the 10 years. I want even stronger in, uh, integrated research and innovation environments. I want even more world-leading talent and I want to see even stronger uh, companies, new and old, making a difference on the societal challenges and I think that we have the opportunity for that. Thank you. And Peter? Uh, three words, collaborate, focus and trust. And there you go. <laughs> uh, I would say um, engaged in, uh, engage if you're a researcher or industry, engage in our research programs from the foundation. Mine were learn, trust, cooperate, oh, there you which go. is the <laughs> digital futures. <laughs> but I want to add responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's and important. if I can add something, then, then I think it will be experimentation to, to try different things uh, and to explore what works. I, th I think if you combine all of this, uh, a lot of things will happen. And there we have the recipe for Sweden to lead the race, if one country should lead the race indeed. Thank you very much to our panelists and to our audience for fantastic days, I should say, and for a fantastic panel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.